No, I should have seen Undead coming when it comes to this kind of thing. No, I get them that actually zombies, but. What's good, y'all? It's your main man, Master So here, leading Master Nights of the Roundtable of Company 1. I'm not gonna hit a spin move right now because my foot hurt. We are back with Undead Unluck, Episode 6. Not the halfway point of the show, but the halfway point of the season. You know the difference. Now, when it comes to this, we already deal with the UMA, the Yumas before when it came to Andy getting his clothes. But I guess all these considered, it wasn't as threatening as it is now. I know there's levels to it, especially when it comes to the unstuff with the games. So, this episode we're dealing with spoil, making your body spoil, making it decay and rot. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we actually started this on the road in Nevada. Andy driving down the highway with his bay in the backseat, not backseat, the passenger seat. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all can't tell me Foucault's titties doesn't look bigger in that Yuma shirt. I said Yuma when I meant Union. Them Union titties. Two titties in unison. It's a beautiful thing. Her tits look bigger. They do. And while Andy wanted to say, fuck all this shit, just go to Vegas. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> ain't too many people gonna drive through Nevada without at least sightseeing, right? Fuko says no because they're on a mission. A mission that she forgot need to be reminded of. You know why you didn't go to Vegas, Andy? Because you missed it beforehand. Uh, you know, we, just got, we got to stop for gas. I'm going to stop at this gas station over here in this nearby city. I think it's like, hmm, let's say Vegas? What a coincidence. After retelling the explanation, that's when Shin comes in and realizes he was on top of the car the whole time. Apparently Andy wasn't playing when it came to leaving this man. But apparently he was playing about the burger. Where's the burger? I was promised burgers in this episode. I don't eat burgers. <laughs> you either can give me what I asked for or give me what you said you was going to give me. I expect both. But because it's dangerous up there, Foucault told him to get into the car with the good air conditioning, which upset Andy. <laughs> you know what's funny? I'm not sure if Andy just hates Shin because he wasn't able to complete, complete their fight, or he just doesn't want Shin to be a third real. Because it was Andy that had Shin come on this mission in the first place. He said he had to be on the mission on his terms, which, from Shin's point of view, fuck all that. You're gonna drag me on this mission, I can't even ride in the whip? Andy? What? Now we are kind of dealing with zombie apocalypse rules here, because you roll up on a... <laughs> A spot that is kind of just blocked off by a whole bunch of zombies. Not zombies, but it just make things easier, right? Sorry about that. They interrupted my outside noise and it crossed my train of thought. I'm getting to the point where we was running over zombies. I mean, probably was rules. Andy, Andy told Fuko to brace herself and close her mouth. And just drove straight through the zombies. And you know, it's not really brought up a lot when it comes to collisions, when it comes to cars. But you know, if you're driving fast enough, if you actually hit a person. God forbid, yeah. It's kind of like in most ways when you hit a deer in headlights. Yeah, it still wrecks your car. In this case, hitting multiple zombies at one time. I forgot to mention the problem was that Andy did that fire, that, that missile. You can tell here that the freaking truck not only goes through it, it breaks the windshield, the airbags deploy on Foucault's face. Just for it all to be said and done, Andy to jump out the car and just took out the rest of the zombies. Also, zombie 100 logic. Reminded well, this man keeps a sword in his back. I don't really see samurai tactics a lot in zombie apocalypse shows, but they are effective. Shen telling Fuko that she has a crazy boyfriend. Fuko's unable to tell him that he's not his boyfriend because she's muffled by the airbag. Then we take picking his spots, don't he? Airbag straight to the titties. I just talked about that. Ladies, how does that feel? How much does airbags help if you already got big titties? This is a question for another day. I gotta step my game up. This weight loss done fucked me up. Anyways. While Andy goes through the zombies, he finds one zombie that's not 100% spoiled. Which, huh? And he brings his girl closer to the truck. However, Shin reminds him that he don't know Shin. <laughs> By him, I mean Andy. Shin still hasn't 100% explained his powers, but he says here that he's able to activate his power by simply looking at people. And of course, uh, Foucault's her power is activated by touch, physical contact. And then there's Andy, whose powers pretty much affect himself. And I just thought about something. Google hasn't used her on like one time this episode, and despite me talking about titties, it's been no fan service. This is the first. I'm not even talking about either or, I'm talking about both. <laughs> Long story short, we come to find that <laughs> Spoil's ability activates the second you step into town, and the truck conveniently stopped right outside of town. Right on that line, yo. And Clothie, or Tothy, basically is able to tell Andy that he now has a number on his stomach. A number is a counter, counting down until he spoils. I guess that is some fan service if you like Foucault's stomach, but Shannon Foucault does not have that number, at least not yet. Which didn't have my mind racing the tag, I ain't gonna hold you, I was kinda just sitting there thinking like, okay, so how does this affect Andy? Does he kinda just spoil and come right back? Or does he spoil completely and come back afterwards after he dies? I think the latter would've been better. Cause right now he's never actually able to unspoil, not completely. Cause when his hand spoiled, it came back. Then when it came back, it went immediately to the other side of his face. 
Which may end up being a thing where, okay, maybe he'll heal himself again, then the spoiler takes on more, but eventually the spoiler's gonna take the whole thing. And it's at that moment where Andy had to reborn herself the whole way. Wouldn't that get rid of the spoil? I guess that theory is not like that even matters, because of course what ends up happening in the Fuku with Shen later. But in the meantime, Andy's getting hitched. Apparently when he's getting spoiled, he's able to speak to Zombies. You can't even blame people for calling this shit Zombies now. <laughs> and the girl tells him that she wants to be married before she dies. And he's like, alright, we'll make it happen. Boy, Andy's slick and romantic, like. <laughs> it's one thing to try to show him a pants off a girl so she can give you the best step ever after you sleep with her. It's another thing to meet a dying woman, <laughs> turn into a zombie, and she tells you her dying wishes to get married. You're just obliged just because. Yes, there's the underlying thing about they need her to figure out who Spoiler is, to point out what Spoiler is, and yes, which does end up happening. It just kind of feels like with Andy's demeanor and what we learned from Andy this whole time, it kind of just looked like it has nothing to do with it. Yo, know, this girl got like a good hour. I'm just gonna marry her right quick, you know, get widowed and all that. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's not too out of character for man. Andy even asks Fuko if she, he, she considers it cheating, and she just laughs it off, being surprised as fuck in the beginning. And that kind of displays into the thing I was playing earlier. Does Fuko laugh it off? Because once again, this is Andy just doing random Andy shit, though. It's kind of like. Nah, it's, it's the first one, isn't it? Maybe in the background, she doesn't feel threatened by a zombie dying when it comes to actually taking her man, but. I just say this is one of those days while Shin was confused about what was going on, but if you take it from Shin's perspective and look into it, you kind of realize the reason Shin has this reaction he's having because he hasn't been around these two for that long. The conclusion that he comes to himself later. Speaking of later, as Andy and girl starts to walk off, Fuko sees a young boy that is wearing a baseball uniform. Jojo reference? He isn't even blonde. Poyo Nick? He sees adults and he goes right back on the ground. But a Fuko, who is an adult, runs over there <laughs> and just follows the kid. What's happening to Andy right now is based off the entire conversation and him just jumping into the situation without thinking of it first. Yeah, here is Fuko. One of those things where when Shin caught back up to Fuko, he basically told him how her and Andy are the same person when it comes to this kind of thing. Fuko couldn't say nothing. But the reason why these kids are hiding underground is because they're hiding from adults in general because they've already been cursed, revealing the numbers on their stomach. Straight up not trusting adults. To the point where it's like, we don't trust you because you won't even come over here. That's just proof. First of all, that's freaking stupid. We didn't come over there because we could turn the zombies to come over there. That has nothing to do with trust. That has something to do with smart. You could be my big greatest homie ever. I'm not just going to come over there and get turned into a zombie because you're going to turn into a zombie. Matter of fact, why are you telling me to come over here to get turned into a zombie? Wouldn't you rather tell me that this, if I go over there, I come a zombie and just try to save me that way? Where's my Hunter Hunter, folks? He didn't need a Leorio in his life. What is going on here? I'm not going to turn you into a zombie because I'm a zombie. Like... Anyways, there is indeed the moment here where Fuko ends up just denying, and denying all the boys' claims to just running in there trying to hug him anyways, put him straight into the titties. Because of the, the circumstances and the mission involved, Shin follows behind Fuko reluctantly, putting the timer on both of their stomachs and the countdown is on. So when it comes to Fuko here, it's one of those things where yes, this is character defining moments, it just kind of comes off as a little bit typical. It is one of those things where, yes, I, I like how Fuko is putting in, getting her into her, her own character, especially out of last week, setting her own goals, getting her own ambition, and saying what she wants to do, rather than just following Andy around, just end up being the person he sleeps with. But I can't deny the cliches here. Fuko is really just that girl that never put that never puts herself first and always just worries about others and just kind of just goes with what they're doing. It's easily deceived, by the way. Even that moment where she had with Shin, right, right in that nighttime, right beforehand, next episode, that next episode, the next scene, where she was talking about, you know, how she wanted to do this mission. Shin brought up, you know, Jine, but she was talking about if we were able to meet this spoiled guy and figure out what's going on with his powers, maybe he could give Andy the death that he's looking for. Kind of never mind any reason she had to do this in the first place, she just immediately thinking about Andy. But she could kind of throw romantic tones into, but there's no point in doing that because honestly, she'll do that for anybody. As we just seen, she's hugging this kid right now, she's risking herself being spoiled. That's all I'm gonna say about it for now, but yeah. Fuko, I'm not mad at you, but we've seen your character before. And lastly, after putting a big old ready dress on this girl, I think Andy has a thing for trying to undress woman. Andy, already in a suit, <laughs> is at the altar with the girl getting married, paraphrasing what the pastor would say, paraphrasing. And, and the, the, the pews is filled with other zombies that's just dare to attend the wedding. On one hand, you can't even call them zombies for real because they all still have a conscience and able to speak. On the other hand, when it comes to the line and what I just said about if I'm a zombie, I'm not going to turn you into a zombie. If I was actually a zombie, that wouldn't be up to me, would it? These guys are literally just sitting there with a will of their own at the end of the day, just happy to see a wedding. 
I mean, we're being spoiled. We're dying anyways, right? Might as well just be here for this grand occasion. However, just being a bride, able to put on a wedding dress was enough for the woman. As she speaks slowly, but able to speak to Andy. I wish I didn't know it was necessary to Andy those nominees. And she ends up telling him that he needs to save her friends. Well, his friends. But he does. she does reveal a spoil. As in that, I don't know what's called. That thing at the end of the church. Which Andy says he shouldn't take out spoil because of the mission. But since his wife is now telling him to. <laughs> he immediately cuts it up. But, you know, spoil is not going to go down that easy. Slowly but surely shows his true form. This guy looks like that dude from Power Rangers. You know who. And in the moment where the animation of the scenery is off the chain, as this show does do, Spoiler just stands there right before Andy, ready to go. But not before Andy, but proofs a zombie army. Because of Andy's nice gesture, all his zombies is already backing him up. And he's pretty much putting that down the line in front of the whole town. Hey, you guys who are zombies, this guy turned into a zombie. If you still got free will on your own, whoop his ass. This thing reminds me of Zombie Island from Scooby Doo. The zombies are the good guys. Even if you do disagree when the bad guy eventually show up that messes up the zombies in the first place, oh, they here for that ass. Spoiler. I ain't gonna say it. And that's the episode. So, yeah, two part. I really like Gene, because you know, when Gene's thing came up, the whole episode was really was about getting to Russia, eventually meeting this girl. Then she realized that she was Gene at the end. And then we move on to the next part. This feels more like an official two parter because we spent the whole episode going after Spoil, and now we found him. Then we was in Russia, we went to Justin Russia for the first place of finding Gene. Hmm, I guess it depends how you look at it. Next week's preview always show Andy's girlfriend hugging Andy's wife, so. Also, is Spoil able to undo the spoiling? Because, like, Andy is one thing, but Fuku and Shin got that number on their stomachs too. Wouldn't they have to do all these considered kill Spoil to get that number off? But hey, we're on that next week. We'll see how this thing goes. Another good ass episode on Undead Unluck. We see we're now in the union. Things are getting a little bit more serious now. Look out for a video this weekend where I talk about two other shows that are going right along with this one. See about the contender for the top show of the season. If you watch this video, leave a comment. I don't know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out. This is my last video of the day, so I'm going to tip a spin move. You're welcome.